SWG Legends has received a massive update this May in the Deep Space Enhancement update. This update has brought many changes to the space aspect of the game as well as a few tweaks to the ground aspect. So let's take a look and see what has changed. First of all, the Deep Space region itself has been updated. The Imperial Star Destroyer and Rebel Freedom Station are still present, however the non-player character ships are gone. Asteroids have been added as cover around the middle of the region and four hyperspace beacons have been added. Whichever faction controls the majority of the four beacons will gain additional rewards for every five minutes inside the deep space region. Destroying a beacon causes it to respawn as your factions, so an Imperial destroying a rebel faction beacon will cause a Imperial controlled beacon to spawn in its place. Beacons can be upgraded by flying up to them, opening communications, and then standing still for a few moments. Beacon upgrades are progressive, starting with additional armor and ending with weapon upgrades. A beacon that's fully upgraded will state it in the ship details when targeted. Beacons will lose an upgrade if it is destroyed or one hour has passed since upgrading. Space PvP tokens are a new currency added with Deep Space. In addition to your faction controlling beacons, these tokens can be earned from destroying enemy player ships and assisting in destroying an enemy player. Bonus tokens can be earned by going on a kill streak or ending another player's kill streak. Tier 4 destroy duty missions can be taken from your faction's respective space station, which reward space. PvP tokens and regular duty mission tokens. Imperials can redeem the space PvP tokens at the Imperial Outpost on Talus and Rebels on Rory at the Rebel Outpost. New rewards include decorations, pilot suits, helmets, and other cosmetic additions. The R2D2 comlink starts a collection that will reward the player with a space mobile. Other new cosmetics include schematics for ship component style retrofit kits which allow you to change the physical appearance of the component on your ship or the weapon projectile effects. One of the new retrofit kits allows players to rename reverse engineered ship parts. Another new schematic for a space scrap container has been added. This item allows you to convert looted ship parts into scrap that can then be sold to a chassis dealer opening up a lot of inventory space for pods on the fly. Two new schematics have been added for houses, those being the YT-1300 and YT-2400 structures. Three new ship chassis have been added with these vendors. The TIE Brute is an Imperial ship with stats similar to the Rebel's Y-Wing. The VCXAS is a Rebel ship similar to the TIE Aggressor. The V-19 Torrent is similar to the Royal Guard Interceptor and is flyable by any pilot faction. Lastly, and most importantly, the inventory of these vendors will rotate four times a year. The seasonal items include schematics for wearables and player houses, such as two other housing schematics not yet on the vendors, paintings, and the scale models of ships and space objects. In addition to the new content, a lot of changes have occurred regarding the jump to light speed portion of the game. Let's highlight a few important ones. Along with hyperspace beacons and asteroids, macro dump zones have been added to the deep space region. Newly reverse engineered ship parts will be flagged as no sell by default. You can change them to sellable at chassis dealers if you wish to junk deal them. War terminals and intel pads have been updated to show the number of players currently in deep space instead of just indicating player presence. This update does not apply to any other zone in the game. Most space stations will now offer to reload all of the player's missiles and countermeasure launchers for a fee. The ordnance will be taken directly from your inventory and the process requires a ship to be at a standstill for some time. For POB ships, all rewards are limited to the passengers currently grouped with the ship's pilot. This includes experience, faction points, GCW points, credits, tokens, and so on. Similarly, for POB ships, droid commands can only be ran by crew members who are currently grouped with the ship's pilot. The duty token bonus for being special forces has been removed. To compensate, all duty token reward amounts have been increased. The stat coloration of the spaceloot.txt file now applies to bazaar and vendor listings. Player spaceships now have 10 seconds of invulnerability after any death. This hopefully gives them time to escape or retaliate against waiting bounty hunters. Some past Senate resolutions have been implemented with this update. For the non-space ones, Mandalorian armor has been updated to allow better color matching between pieces. Imperial officer clothing now has additional color palettes for further matching as well. Many other color palettes for clothing and ships were expanded and approved across the game. For the space-specific resolutions, I like to highlight that the Y-Wing now has a maximum mass identical to that of the Y-Wing Long Probe. Also, player ship shields now change to 100% when the ship lags for special forces. 
And finally, the prototype ship components granted with the starter ships have had their stats improved and been given a booster. Lastly, for the updates, let's look at a few bugs, fixes, and miscellaneous changes. First of all, the controlled enzyme manipulation benefit in city expertise now properly improves results of the hydrolase refining process. Also, the minor madness quests on Mustafar should no longer prevent players from completing the quest if they die during the quest. The miscellaneous change I want to mention is that the tick rate, or the speed at which the server updates, has been increased to 30 times per second in all game zones. This change should hopefully result in better user experience for players. On the first Saturday following the Deep Space update, a player-organized event was held in Deep Space focusing on getting as many gunships and POBs up there as possible. Over 160 players attended and spaced each other for about two hours, generating hundreds of thousands of space PvP tokens in the process. Here are some highlights of the event from my perspective as a gunner aboard the Rebel Align Vigo gunship. Enjoy the carnage.
Thanks for watching and stay hungry.